Okay, so what do they say? Have I got a deal for you? Just going to ask you to join me on a little bit of a journey into the world that I inhabit as a program advisor for the National Library. I invite you to picture my clients, my users, a group of about 450 schools spread across the central North Island. Some are small, one teacher and maybe fewer than 15 students. Others are large, 100 plus teachers, hundreds of students, and spread, urban, rural, you name it. Each one of those teachers and students is a digital citizen, occupying their own position on that continuum between visitor and resident in the digital world, and they transition along and back, depending on the situation. If we were to ask any of those schools that I work with what digital citizenship looks like in their place, the descriptions we'd get would be quite different, but there would be some common themes. We'd be talking about connected and capable students, students who can choose and inhabit the digital world comfortably. They'll be mentioning social media used appropriately, safe searching, and as Andrew has indicated, critical literacy. Giant size issue will be the whole area of copyright and intellectual property. What can we do, what can't we do, and how do we know? We'll be talking about ethical use of information as well. We'll talk about digital footprints, or as I'm quite liking to refer to them, digital tattoos, because they're a great deal harder to erase. So <laughs> I'll leave you with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Another predominant issue for schools is the whole area of cyberbullying. How do they respond? How are we teaching our students to actually look after themselves and their friends in that digital world? Most schools are grappling with the whole idea of students bringing their own device. I listened to a school from Auckland talking at a conference I attended recently. Over a thousand students, but more than 4,000 devices arriving in that school each day. And the impact that that had on bandwidth and response time was immense. So it's, be, it's thinking ahead, and those are huge issues for schools to address. We're absolutely talking about explicit teaching and integration of digital citizenship issues with the curriculum. That's using authentic contexts so that students are actually practicing skills and learning them within, within a lesson that has some meaning for them. <clears throat> now my role is to assist schools as they identify how the library supports learners and teachers, in fact we'll call them all learners, in developing as digital citizens. Doubly tricky because we're preparing students for careers that may not exist at this stage, careers that I can't even begin to imagine. <coughs> Excuse me. A number of schools as they approach this issue are using Mike Ribble's work on digital citizenship where he identifies nine elements that you might cover in terms of a teaching program. The area of digital access, that full participation in society in the digital sense. Digital commerce, how do you act when you're buying or selling online? And it's an area increasingly that our students are moving into. Digital communication, that exchange of information between one another, between organisations. The area of digital literacy, the teaching and learning about technology and how to use it. The digital etiquette, that standards of behaviour and conduct. Then digital law, what do we actually, what, what do we have to abide by? And again, how do we know? Flows quite easily into the area of digital rights and responsibilities and digital security and self-protection. Teaching even very young students about how to design a safe password. How to, what do we know about that? How soon can you learn? Well, actually, from about the time you're five. And also, digital health and wellness. So, managing yourself in that online world, how much is too much? Is going to sleep with your iPhone or your tablet under your pillow a really good idea? 
If you're a teenager, they would say yes. In the rest of the workshop, and this is the sort of buy from me spiel, I'm just going to focus on two of those aspects. So digital access, that easy 24-7, anywhere, anytime access to information that addresses issues of equity and physical access to digital tools and the skills to use them, and understanding what appropriate participation means. In terms of a teenager, that probably means that I'd like to say that we see them online acting appropriately. It's absolutely not about banning Facebook. It's learning how to use the tool effectively. And the second, about digital rights and responsibilities. That's the privileges and freedoms that we all have in the digital world. How are we, protect, uh, how are we pardon me, preparing students to protect their own rights and the rights of others? And what do we understand ethical use to be? Is it mindful, deliberate and appropriate behaviour? Or is it casual and misinformed and if I didn't know, well, it doesn't really matter? That school libraries and libraries in general have a role to play in growing digital citizens is absolutely not in question. But the challenge that I'd like to pose in the groups this afternoon is how are we alerting students to the, or users to the opportunities that we have on offer and how are we all collaborating in this work so that we're not reinventing the wheel or each working in our own bubble? Thank you. <laughs>